Hi, well, thanks for clicking through, and I hope you enjoy the video that we're about to go through. Um, this is uh, this channel is going to be some tutorials and explaining the process of how I make the paintings that I that I make. Um, so each week, at least once a week, I'll post um, a tutorial on one of my paintings from that week um, that I have to go through, and I'll just explain the whole process from beginning to end. Um, and hopefully some somebody out there will find that useful and they'll be able to use some of that or parts of it to um, improve their work um, and find a different way or a new way of doing things or get some tips on how to do it. So oh, I'll also try and drop in some con some concept maybe that I'm thinking of when I'm painting either in a practical sense, um, some concept that I'm using and to, to work with to make the work and better or something I'm trying to work on to improve myself, or some conceptual idea, just a, a reason for doing something um, rather than just how to do it. So we'll see how the paintings go and, and what comes up in each one. Uh, that's it really, so I'll just start the playthrough and I'll explain um, as we go. So for for this painting, I'm trying, I've, I start in the ways that um, I'm trying to be consistent and start at the moment, which is the same, use the same process over and over again so that I get used to that process and how I make the painting. So eventually you think less about how you're doing it and you can you have more mental space for what you're doing. Um, so it is a, a bit of advice that I would give to anybody is to try to get a process down a certain way that you make paintings or drawings the same way consistently each time. Not to never experiment, but to have that uh, consistency so that you can get um, some better results. So at this point, I'm just sketching out roughly the shapes, um, not worrying too much about detail, um, just thinking about big shapes, the proportions, some perspective, and um, you can see at the beginning I had a picture of a horse there, so I'm using some reference. I had that for the for the pose of the of the pig. Um, and I think on the other screen I had some pictures of some potbelly pigs that I was using to kind of get the, the the shape and the face and things like that on the actual pig. So once I've got a nice rough drawing that I that I'm reasonably happy with, um you can't see it on here, but I flip the canvas back and forth constantly to keep checking does the image look good in both directions because you can kind of trick your eye into thinking that it's great and then you flip it and you, you notice a lot of mistakes. Um, then once I've got that drawing, that initial drawing, that sketch that I'm happy with, I then um, just lower the opacity on that, on that layer and put a new layer on top and then I start going into it in more detail so this is a smaller or a thinner line um, and again I'm not trying to get really 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 detailed because I know eventually I'm going to paint over all of this or quite a lot of it so I don't I try not to leave much of the line work I'm trying to get better at doing that so it feels more painterly um, but at the same time, I'm I I do really like drawing and I like the line work, so I I, I go through this this process every time because it does help me make a better image, I think, and I really enjoy it. So I'm going back through a little less detail on the body because um it needs it needs less because I know I'll be able to paint that a little bit easier than the face. I like to have a bit more um detail in the faces and things before I start painting so that I know that's that's right. Um, and kind of a rule of thumb that I try to go from is that it's, you can get um, a good finished piece with bad painting as long as you have a good drawing, but it's really difficult to get a good finished piece with good painting if you don't have a, uh, if you have a bad drawing. So the drawing is really important from my perspective. Um, so yeah, still going through, trying to find the lines, the shapes. Again, you can't see it here, but I'm constantly flipping the canvas um, horizontally back and forth to check that the proportions are right. So when I was messing around with his arm there to try to get that right, that's what I was doing there a lot, flipping it back and forth to see where where is this going wrong, is the size right? 
making sure that for as much as possible I'm looking at the entire image at the whole time and not, not laser focusing on one tiny little aspect. Um, so here goes, so I brought in a piece of reference to help me with the, the hand grabbing the sword there. Um, sometimes I put it onto the file, sometimes on the screen next to it. So then I was happy with that and I thought, you know, I just need to neaten up the little goblin a little bit more. So got rid of the very first layer or just made it visible, um, invisible. Then I dropped the opacity on that second drawing that I've done and now I'm going back through again with an even fine drawing on, on the face. So I, I probably didn't need to do this, but um, I just really wanted to feel like I understood what I was going to be painting. And I, like I said, I do think the drawing is really, really important. So for me, I always, I um, almost always go through quite a few drawing stages, knowing that it will make my painting better if I know that that kind of foundation is there. So now I'm just going over all my line work, making sure I'm still happy with um, all the shapes. And really, it's just tiny little refinements. So adding a buckle, um, I added kind of, the little shoulder ruffles, um, neatened up the face quite a lot, sorted out the teeth. I think they were a little bit off um, in the this, in this second drawing. So I'm just going through putting the straps in. Um, then I was playing with some ideas on the actual pig, um, on the harness and uh, in that, around the face. Um, I decided in the end not to put anything there because I quite liked his face. And the things that I tried kind of took away from his expression which which is, you know, I thought it was quite fun, so I didn't want to cover that up. Uh, now I'm going through and just putting on some of the armour for the little goblin, um, just to bring him to life. And But again, I don't want to cover up too much because I, I like all the shapes that I've got on his body, so I, I want to see, you know, his thigh and um, don't want to put too much on his arms or anything like that. Um, again, just little details. Um, make, they, they make... A picture these kind of things I think um, just the small small details that that bring it to life um, okay so once I've got my drawing I underneath that so I, I make that drawing layer a multiply layer and then underneath that layer I start painting and the, the first thing I, I do is a tonal um, painting so I'm just going through to get all of the values um, it's much much easier to do this if you're doing it in black and white um, or grayscale. So I, I used to kind of go straight into color, but I find that I tend to make things too saturated, too early, and then, you know, it's, it can be difficult to manage the colors. So this way, this is again what I was saying at the beginning of keeping the same process consistently. I've, I've decided of late to just stick with the grayscale, go through this process and just do it very, very consistently. And through that process in time, hopefully, you know, I'll get closer to just working straight into color um, in a way that I'm happy. Um, but for now, and, and it is a good thing to do anyway, I, I do enjoy this stage, just putting the, the tonal values um, in to make sure that everything's balanced and you have a nice, range of uh of tone across the painting and it helps you you know put in your lights and your dark so i put a a mid a mid tone first then i find the kind of um the local color of everything so or the local value because i'm we're in black and white right now so how dark is the thing if there was or light is it if there was no direct light on it or it's not in direct um shadow and so i'm trying to figure out those relationships and once I've started to get those down then I'll start coming in and putting in so I, I lowered it a bit there I felt a bit bright and now I'm kind of putting back through and going back over with a little bit more of an eye for where shadows lights and darks might be um, and again trying to look at as much of the image as I can um, whilst I'm painting so I try not to zoom in really close because you can get kind of laser focused on an area, work really hard, come back out and realize actually that doesn't look very good in relation to most of the other, uh, the rest of the image. And you find, well, I do anyway, that you'd spend a lot of time then 
going back and forth in the same area, which is not, you know, particularly efficient and it doesn't help with the the idea that really what you're doing is painting an entire image rather than just a tiny little um, section of it. So now I'm going through it again, just trying to refine some of these areas. Um, I do at this stage also try to give some sense of the texture, so I'm trying to give the pig that kind of um, short hair that they have around their face and some areas of, of just skin, like that chubby skin, as well as some more fluffy bits on the back, just giving this uh, the suggestions, because if I, if I, again, easier to do, I think, um, in the grayscale before you put the colours on. Um, and it just gives a really, really good base. So yeah, I'm just going to be plodding along with that, which you'll see kind of going along in the background. Um, part I thought what would be kind of interesting as well with, with these videos is is alongside it I can talk a little bit about some of my either concepts like I said at the beginning of the in a practical sense the why or the reason that I do things the way I do them but also just some ideas around art and making art um, because I, from my personal experience and from where I am right now I, I really value hearing that from other people how they make their art and why and how they deal with their with their challenges um because we all have them so i mean in my from where i am right now i'm a my my job i'm a full-time teacher i'm a primary school teacher so and i'm a dad with two two really young kids so time is precious um so most of the time i can i can only work quite late um in the evening um and so I, I guess kind of motivation is, is the thing that I would want to talk about right now. Um, and where do you get that motivation when you don't feel like you have anything to draw or paint or you're tired or, you know, you don't feel like you have the time? I, you just have to start. So the, the idea that action comes before motivation um, is, is just really, really true. And... You know, right now it's quite late. Um, I'm really tired. If I was, if I was just waiting for motivation to happen, I wouldn't be going through this process. So I, but you know, you, you you just have to do. You have to find some um, something that you want to do. So if that's paint or draw or make a video or whatever it is, and just start. And then you you know you will eventually build that that motivation as you go through. It's the same with this painting. I remember when I was going through it. I really. I was tired, didn't really have a have an idea about what I was going to paint. Um, and I thought, you know, I'll wait for some idea to come. And But if you wait for those things, often they just they just don't come. Or there'll be many, many other reasons not to actually start and get going. Um, so I just started doodling and, you know, making shapes. And I, I thought, OK, well, I had this goblin character idea, so he, has, he could be riding something. And I just just started thinking of things that he could ride, thought of a pig. And as soon as you make make the start, you become motivated um, by having that that idea that sets you going. Um, but if you sit and just wait, it's just you know you you just won't get to do things. So um, I guess hopefully by watching and listening, although I'm not doing it very eloquently, you through these videos in time, um, you will get that sense of. You know, these are some practical things that you can do to help improve your your painting, um, because you know I'm I'm constantly working on it myself, and these I'm not these are works in progress all the time. I'm just trying to improve, um, but explaining your thought process I think is a really good way to do that. Um, that might help other people, but also the the some of the ideas of why um, I do the things I do, or how do I kind of overcome some of the things that I find difficult um, and things that are working for me might work for somebody else. So yeah, I guess um, motivation is a, is, a, is a really important part of doing anything, but it's you've got to have that you've got to have that idea that the action comes before the motivation. you've just got to start doing something. Um, and this this painting is a good example of that because I didn't really know what I was going to do and I didn't really feel like doing anything before I started it. Um, but I just went went with that idea of 
well, you've got to start something and you'll, you'll get motivated. And I ended up with um, a piece that I was really happy with. Um, so we're coming now, I think you can see I'm just putting some stuff, some detail around the pig's leg. Um, we're probably just nearing the next stage. So once I'm happy with the, the tonal drawing um, of the painting, I put that on a multiply layer and then underneath um, I start painting colour and what that does is it allows you to maintain the tonal relationships between the different parts of the painting but in the colour that you choose so it's a really good way to, to sort of put a base colour on and keep all of the work that you've done and have a really really nice kind of canvas to then work on on an overpainting um, it can be a bit tricky selecting the colours because they don't react exactly as you would expect um, because they're being they're kind of re reacting to the layer above um, but with a bit of practice um, you can just and experimentation you can just you can find and pick out the colours um, and the, the flashing that you're seeing that would be me turning on and off the layer to, to get to the colour underneath um, and or a painting, I paint each of the blocks of colour in separate sections and separate layers so that I can make them change their opacity um, or change the actual colour individually so that then I can I can manipulate each particular little aspect of it. Um, once I'm happy with that, which I've got to that point now, I would start painting over the top. So I have a I'd flatten all of that image down. Um, or I, I try to, to sort of be a bit disciplined and work on one layer as much as possible. Um, so I'd copy them all, make a duplicate, flatten it down, and then I would paint, or I am painting, on top, um, just on a normal layer. So now I'm just overpainting. So what I'd be thinking about now is trying to maintain the, the kind of relationships of light and dark that I've got, but there are definitely parts that I can push into more shadow and some that I can bring into into more light and I try and remove some of the um, uh, line work um, in selective places. Some places I leave it because it's quite nice to have that edge um, and in others I will completely remove it. So right now I'm going over um, putting some light in, some rim light. Um, sometimes I overuse this because I really like how it looks. Uh, you have to be quite disciplined though because it, because it can get a bit too much. Um, but you know I think it's alright on this on this piece. It worked out worked out pretty well I think. So I'm going through and just trying to find those fur shapes without painting every individual fur or piece of fur. So I'm just trying to get a sense of the broader shapes um, and concentrating on big shapes and gradually refining them in. Okay, just going through and adding the detail. Um, so now what would happen is I'm, I'm just plodding along on this top layer. Um, just trying to just trying to add these final touches um, to bring it to life. But all of the groundwork has been done. Um, and then this bit you can kind of relax into it a little bit so that, you know, the first stage, if you get your really, if you get your drawing done really, really well and you're really happy with it, then you've got a really solid foundation. Um, if you focus and go through, and this is obviously in my my experience, my perspective, my method, um, get that black and white uh, grayscale um, level done and you get satisfied to a point um, with the lights and darks and how they're working across the piece, that's a good base then for the first colour to go on. And if you get happy with that, uh, it's a really good base for then the final, for the final overpainting layer because you can color pick all of the colors that you've you've worked out through the process. So this is it's just a sequence, um, and the system eventually becomes more important than the ultimate goal. So I think if I you know the goal I mean if I think about the goal in this painting it's to paint a goblin on top of a pig. Um, if I just started straight out from where I am, um, personally I would have. It would have been a struggle just to get the colour and just, just get painting with this. I'm, there's lots of amazing artists that can do it, but I'm not one of those artists. So um, for me, I concentrate on my the process. 
what's the system? So I have my goal. That's the image I want. Um, this this goblin uh, riding a pig. Then my system is the thing that's going to get me there. And if I concentrate on on each step within that system, um, the goal kind of sorts itself out. It kind of comes through. Um, and it's just about being disciplined and and practicing the same way that you make an image. And like I said towards the beginning, don't abandon experimentation. Um, but I do think it's really important to have a consistent approach in, in your art so that you are practicing and refining something very particular and specific. And then any changes that you make, you can better judge whether they are working or not working. It's, it's much more difficult to do that if one day you just paint straight with colour, the next day you try a sketch, the next day you do a black and white layer um, and put colour on it um, uh, in a different way, using a different type of layer combination. Um, because every time you approach an image, then you're not quite sure where can I make the improvements? What change has made a difference? Because you, you change too many things um, at once. So just stick with the process. This is this is one that a lot of artists use and it's one that I use. Um, and just practice that and, and see, you know, give it, give it quite a few images before you consider changing it, you know, a really, really good run. And um, I'd say maybe 10, 15, 20 paintings before you start really thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to try something different because it can take a long time to, to feel that you're making progress. And I, and I, I feel like that every time I do a painting, it's very easy to get disheartened, um, because you just think, oh, I should have, you know, this is X number of paintings in and I don't feel like I'm getting better. But then if you look at it from my perspective, when I feel like that most of the time, it's because, oh, well, one day I did this type of thing. The next day I tried to do it a different way Then you know, the next image I tried to do it a completely different way. And I'm not, it's very easy to feel like you're working towards one kind of aim, which might be to get better at painting, um, but actually you're not doing that, you might be working towards, you might be spreading yourself too thin or, or doing it in too many different ways that so you, you're not giving yourself time to get good at a process before you start um, experimenting anymore. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think that's enough from me on this video. Uh, sorry if I waffled a little bit. Um, I had some notes, but uh, maybe they weren't <laughs> refined enough. But it's the first video, and like I said, every week, I'll post a new one um, with some with the commentary over the top to explain my thinking, what I'm doing, and I'll try and get a little bit more concise with some kind of concept. Because I think it's it's good to have some idea behind the reasons the art was made and some discussion around the things that I've struggled with as an artist while making the pieces or general pieces so that anybody out there that might feel the same can hear you know, sometimes it just helps to hear that somebody else is having the same kind of struggles and listening to some ways they've worked towards maybe um, making them a bit easier. Uh, well, that's it for now. So please um, like if you've liked it, subscribe um, and just look out for the next one. I think I'll try to get them up at least every Saturday um, and maybe one on a Wednesday um, if I have time. All right, great. Well, thanks for watching. See you soon.